Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. Welcome back to another Friday video. Last week we did a how to rebuild and clean and reassemble an Abu Garcia 5500 Commander reel. I have several of them. I'm getting ready to go out and do a little bit more fishing. Just wanted to get them cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, not to mention I felt like the spool tension could be a little looser, so I wanted to check it out and good way to check it all out. Hey, real quick, um, this is going to be a two-part series. This first video, the one you're on now, is going to be all about how to replace all the fuel lines that sit within the housing of your outboard engine. Certainly something you want to do if they've been sitting for a long time, especially if you've used ethanol fuel and you didn't prep or drain it prior to storing it, which I did not. The second video in this series is going to be all about rebuilding a carburetor. Every single step from removing it from the engine to how to disassemble it, how to clean it, how to put it back on, and ultimately get it running again. Hope you find that useful. If you only want to see the carburetor rebuild kit, that's not this video, it's part two. I'll put a link to part two right up here. Um, today, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of work on our outboard. Um, so this is kind of an interesting story. When we first bought Dream Chaser, so let's go in the Wayback Machine, five years almost at this point. Uh, when we bought that boat, it had a 12 and a half foot uh, West Marine inflatable dinghy, a rigid inflatable dinghy, and it had almost a brand new 9.9 .9 horsepower four-stroke Mercury on it. Uh, we used it a few times when we first got the boat, uh, but not much. Um, we would kind of tool around up and down the river a little bit with it when the boat was not, not in commission. Um, about a year after that, we ended up buying what you've probably seen if you've watched any of our videos, and that is the, uh, the Zodiac Yacht Tender. It's a center console, uh, rigid inflatable with a 30 horse uh, engine on it. Uh, much better for the whole family, gets up on a plane with all four of us, right? But that that meant is my West Marine dinghy and Mercury 9.9 .9 have just sat in dry storage forever. I didn't do anything special to set it up. Um, you know, once every couple of months I would go out and have to scoop leaves out of it so it would flow water out the bottom the thing was holding in, in the dinghy. Um, and I suspect that motor is in rough shape, so I need to do some work on it. Last time we were in Louisiana, I grabbed the outboard off of the dinghy, I put it in the, uh, in the in the trailer and I brought it on back here. So today I'm going to make myself just a cheap and easy um, outboard stand so I can do some work on it kind of comfortably right here. So I'm going to do it an easy way. If you can go online and you can buy um, outboard rolling stands and I'll put some links in them down below. They're on Amazon. They're anywhere from 90 bucks to 120 or so for just a lightweight motor like this and under under 20 horse. Uh, or you can go and buy a couple of these sawhorse brackets um, for you know eight bucks or something like that and they're pretty simple you take a two by four you put it in each leg two by four goes across the top and when you spread them out at an angle for a, for the stand the two by this holds the two by four so i just did this ran over to the lumber yard took two two by fours cut them each at 36 inches tall um, <laughs> i chose this height selfishly i didn't want it low enough that i could put a five gallon bucket right under it to be able to run the motor in a five gallon bucket I wanted to be able to stand comfortably and work on it, not kind of be hunched over the whole time. So I made these legs a little longer. What that means is uh, the water inlet ports will be up a little bit higher and I can either get a trash can and put water in it or, or use one of those little cups things that go on it with the garden hose. Um, for me, I figured I'm gonna be doing a lot more working on it than I am just running it. So I wanted it to be a little taller. But what that meant is, you know, two $4 two by fours, um, got me the, the you know one for each leg plus each one had 25 inches or 24 inches left over and this can be the cross member that the outboard will sit on so let's get and get this thing assembled so before i go crazy and actually put a couple of nails or screws in the side of this i just want to see how well these things sort of um, sit up and i think i might also cut the uh, angles on the bottom of them at some point but not right now i mean for now i just want this to be plain simple and easy all right what's this looks like we're just going to take one leg here and get my two by four and set it right across the top. I'm going to spread this open. Yeah, those teeth go right into it. That's kind of nice. I think it would benefit from cutting angles at the bottom, but I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> there we go. This is uh, plenty sturdy for the outboard. I'm already seeing a little bit of a challenge I'm going to have, and that is a trash can is not going to fit in the curvature of that, but that's all right. We'll figure that piece out next, or I can just get a longer 2x4 to put this engine on here. It's only 10 horse, so it's not like it's uh, too heavy to support it, but this will be a good setup.
Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's get the outboard on this thing and see how well it does. <laughs> okay, this was hard to get on here and it's been so long since I used it, I couldn't remember how you lowered it down. It was in that um, up raised position. Um, so I had Deb come out here to help me get it on the stand. Uh, and it turned out, I forgot what the mercury is. You have to lift them all the way up before they'll go back down and that's what I was doing wrong. So we have this thing on here um, and now we're just gonna go ahead and take it apart and really just clean everything with it. Um, I'm probably gonna put a new fuel filter in it, check the fuel, get it cleaned out, clean the carburetor, um, check the plugs, just take an, a once over on the whole thing and take a look. That's probably where we'll start. So let's get the cowling off of this thing. There's definitely a few things I think right away we're gonna have to look at. Uh, one is the fuel filter and you can see this is the water line that comes around here and shoots out the bottom of the cowling, you know, so you know it's circulating. But if you look right underneath that, you can see the fuel filter. That fuel filter line goes from the inlet up this way. Uh, it comes along here through the fuel filter up into the fuel pump. From the fuel pump, it comes around the side and over here to my carburetor. So I think I'm gonna take the fuel pump off and the line, and we're gonna just check all of those. I have this little vacuum hose up here, uh, or breather line. I think I'm also gonna take that up to just Napa and see if I can get a replacement for those and this just to make sure there's no problem. They've been sitting a long time. They probably aren't airtight. Um, and then I have this little, this little primer bulb. You can already see fluid right there. So I know that's, these things wear out in no time at all. I hate those things, but we'll take that off. And there's the connection right there. See if I can show you. There's the connection. We'll uh, unhook that, unscrew this piece or the nut on the back, and we'll run up to the store and see if we can get a new primer bulb as well. Uh, the fuel line actually looks pretty good coming off of the inlet here. So right there, looks okay. We'll take a look at that, but I'm gonna clean all of this inlet here too. Unscrew this and really clean it up. The good news is all the mechanisms seem to work really well. When I shift into gear, it goes into gear. My throttle's working nicely. Uh, same with going into reverse. Throttle works nice, so. All in all, this motor was darn near new when we got it. It's just been sitting. Let's go ahead and start by pulling this little uh, clamp off of this fuel line. Wiggle this fuel line until we get that off of there. Just gonna clean the end of that real good. Little pair of needle nose pliers. It's real easy to go ahead and turn. And then we're just gonna rotate this nut off of here. Get this guy right off, and it's as simple as simple as that. There's my bulb with my little hole right in the end. So, all right. So as you can see, here's the fuel inlet. It comes right in here to this line. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this clamp up, and then I'm gonna pull this straight off, but my hand's gonna be in the way of the camera. Okay, I've disconnected the wire from the front of the engine up here and just lifted it up. This water line's a little bit in the way. I'm gonna pull a fuel pump off because it's gonna make it a little easier to get to. All right, I've got the plugs out. I have that little primer bulb out. I have the hoses that went from the primer bulb to the bottom of the carburetor. I have the fuel inlet connection, the locking mechanism. I think I'm gonna replace that the fuel line to the fuel filter, the fuel filter to the actual fuel pump, and from the fuel pump over to the intake of the carburetor. Uh, I think all of that is what I'm gonna, oh, uh, yeah, and I mentioned the spark plug. I think I'm gonna go grab some of these parts. Um, I just took a quick look at the serial number. I'm gonna go double check and see if I can find the part number for that particular fuel pump and just see what they are. If it's like 50 bucks or something, to me it seems like it's money well spent as long as this thing's been sitting around. Uh, if I'm going to work on the fuel system, I'd like to just eliminate anything that might have to do with the fuel system. So uh, it's hard to tell. I'm sure there's a way to test these fuel pumps. I just basically ran my finger on the pump second and I couldn't feel any suction, but that's pretty anecdotal at best. But when I pulled the fuel line off, uh, it almost looked like sand or dust came out of it. It tells you just how long it was sitting up. So definitely need that. And I'm going to have to get some spray cleaner so I can spray inside of all this stuff. Uh, with something flammable, so if it get, does get in there, it's not uh, not gonna cause it a problem. It'll just burn it through. So yeah, let me take off and run to the store and pick up some of this stuff and wash my hands. So I ran to the store, it's actually the next day. I did go ahead and pick up a couple of things. I went ahead and got one of these little um, gas tanks. Um, I wanted a small one. The one we have in the dinghy is a six gallon one. And honestly, it's been sitting for a long time. Uh, it had gas in it. I don't know if I could probably clean it at some point, but just to make this easier for my work today, I went ahead and got another little three gallon tank. It does not have a connection on the end, so you must get lines as well. What's interesting is these fuel lines, especially these little cheap 
Atwood ones. Um, this lime will actually break down over time if you have ethanol in your fuel. And it's very difficult to find non-ethanol fuel. So I don't know what was in there. I was a little bit worried that my old lines probably had broken down a little bit. Um, if you think about what's in a, inside of a hose, there's inner layers of hosing. If that stuff starts to break down, it gets gummy, it works its way into the, uh, into the fuel system, the fuel filter, and ultimately into the carburetor. So I went ahead and picked up a new one. Again, I bought a cheap one just for my testing here. I think when we bring the dinghy over, I may end up um, actually running the fuel lines down along inside the bottom of the rigid inflatable part within the fiberglass hull and mount this up near the bow just to help balance out weight a little bit better. And then I'll make my own fuel line with a, a highly, higher quality fuel line like the ones I bought. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna put all this stuff on. I'm not gonna bother you with that. I showed you where I took everything off. I'm just gonna put all those fuel lines back in. All right, let's start on the front with this primer bulb. What's interesting is I couldn't find one at my local chandlery. So I went to the hardware store where they sell replacement parts for weed eaters and whatnot. And there's usually the prime button on the front of a weed eater. <laughs> this is one from a Briggs & Stratton and it seemed to fit just fine. I used the existing fitting and put a new bulb on it. But you can see here, I used this existing line. That one was nice and clean. It goes over to my carburetor. That's where you prime it. So that fuel line comes right in here underneath this section and then it comes along the bottom here and you can kind of see there's my little inline fuel filter again with hose clamps on either side forgive this hose that's actually my little water exhaust jet that kind of aims out the bottom of the motor so you know that it's peeing and running um, that fuel line goes right into the back bottom side of this particular fuel pump by the way i could not find a fuel pump in stock at the local marine stores so I'm gonna go and try this one and see how well it works. Um, it was about 130 bucks for the fuel pump, about 75 bucks for the rebuild kit. So if this one's not working, I'll probably just buy a new one. I won't bother rebuilding it at that price. I've got my other fuel line on here. And as you can see, these are definitely beefier than they were before. And that's my fuel feed into my carburetor. Again, back here, uh, right behind the dipstick there is another hose connection, hose clamp where it's connected up. I mentioned before, I also put two new plugs in here so we've got those on properly gapped and I did not replace this breather tube mainly because that's all it is is a breather tube so I thought it was a vacuum hose originally but it's not um, so we should be good right there I did pull off this small vacuum hose and I sprayed carburetor cleaner down inside the carburetor here I wanted to really make sure all of this was um, clean inside. We'll see if there's anything else gummed up. It seems like it's moving real well. So we'll see how well this works as we try to start it. So these are the little clips I'm talking about. These, these little just finger tight clips and that's all it is. Um, I took those off and I put actual hose clamps on them so it should certainly be better. Okay, I went ahead and put the spark plugs into it. Pretty easy to do. I had bought two new ones. I did buy a small spark plug gapper just to make sure they were at the recommended gappage that the manufacturer calls for. So I went ahead and adjusted that put them in and uh, yeah let's go ahead and assemble this fuel tank and get ready to put some fuel in it and see what happens. I'm gonna sound like the crotchety old man here I really do dislike the <laughs> the new fuel tanks so they have this safety lever on them and you have to push down on the knob to loosen them up um, I miss that and then I did look around to see if I could find one that at least had the screw cap on the top to unvent them so when you transport it you can close the vent when you're in regular operations you open them you know, there's a lot of um, tanks now that are not vented at all. And what happens is they sit in the dinghy and the fuel expands in there and these things blow up round like a balloon. I mean, it literally doesn't have a flat bottom anymore. Uh, they claim that's normal. It just doesn't feel right to me. Not to mention it doesn't sit right on the dinghy floor. So I found one with a vent. You know what? I'm probably going to rip this safety latch off of there. I hate those things. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. So you can see here, I have my fuel line. When you buy these, you do have to get one that uh, works for your manufacturer. Otherwise, you're gonna have to replace the clip on the end. And these things are clipped on almost like PEX lines. Uh, it's a permanent clip, so you can't just loosen that up and take it off like a hose clamp. If you ever did have to replace this, you'd cut the hose, uh, put a new end on it for you know a Johnson Evinrude versus a Mercury, uh, and then you would put a hose clamp on it. On the other end, this is a universal fit that sort of snaps on. Think of it like a compressor, an air compressor. So we need, to, we need to put that piece on the fuel tank itself. And I gotta tell you, they make these things so cheap. I think it was about 40 bucks or something for this Atwood brand. It's the same one you're gonna get at Walmart, Bass Pro, or 
West Marine, so you may as well get it where it's cheapest. Um, it includes the fitting that goes on the end of the tank, <laughs> but it's plastic. And the funny thing is it has like three little coils of Teflon tape around it. I'm gonna see if that's enough. <laughs> no. They just feel so cheesy. So I'm gonna tighten it up by hand, and then I'm gonna use a, uh, the closed end of a wrench here, because I do wanna make sure that I don't strip this thing given it's plastic, and I wouldn't wanna use just a pair of pliers or something. I would worry that that would potentially um, not strip the threads, but round the, the nut portion of this plastic um, fitting. I'm just snugging that right up to the end where it butts up against it. And now let's just see how well this piece connects. That's it. So we're connected. Let's go ahead and get some fuel in this thing and we'll try and fire up the motor and see what happens. All right, so I've got my tank right here. I've got it open. I did just go pick up um, two gallons of gas. It's a three gallon tank, so I didn't want to go too full on it. Uh, yeah, well, this should be enough to give it a try and see how she, how she does. I've got my prime bulb right here. I'm just gonna squeeze it two times or three times until it feels a little bit tight. Remember, it's gotta pump fuel all the way up this whole hose. So let me talk about something I think might be going on here. You saw me pull it on the engine and it wasn't starting. Uh, I also noticed that when I pumped the bulb on the priming pump, it actually pushed fuel out the top of the carburetor, but never filled the little prime bulb on the front of the engine, as opposed to the inline one. It's making me think that my float may be stuck in the down position, forcing fuel up into the carburetor and essentially over and above. So uh, before I actually take the carburetor apart, I just want to go ahead and check and make sure I've got spark. So as you can see, we have our two spark plugs right here. I'm just going to go ahead and take this top one off of here. And then we're going to go ahead and remove this spark plug. So we're just loosening this up with our fingers. It's easy enough to get right out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to snap this back in here. We don't want to bend the end here that's already gapped. We want it to snap. And then what we're going to do is just place this in a spot where this is touching the ground so we can see if it's sparking. It was almost impossible to actually get the footage of the spark because everything moved around. But I promise this blurry picture has this little spark in it. Okay, so it looked like we were getting a little bit of spark in here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of carburetor cleaner and spray it in the intake here for a minute. And then just give it a pull. And let's see if we get a quick uh, run, if you will. All right, good news is that tells me that I'm getting spark, otherwise it wouldn't have done that. So now it's just a matter of rebuilding that carburetor.